Hey folks, this is Saiyan Chan. I hope all you are doing well today. Uh, in today's informal episode, I wanted to talk about getting some inspirational inspiration and also some hope from the country of Colombia or whatever sources you can get it from in your life, uh, whatever your life circumstances may be. I wanted to make this video because a good friend of mine from Colombia, he was going through my channel and he sent me a comment that I had forgotten about. And it was a guy who, and, and, I'll, and I'll address it in a, a formal video uh, in the near future soon, but he ta it talks about, the guy wrote about him being emotionally broken in Colombia. And guys like him were the men I had in mind when I started Saiyan Chan channel uh, as a man who started his early life very low on the dating sexual marketplace uh, value, very low on the totem pole as uh, a guy who, you know, uh, being uh, not particularly physically impressive and also short and also being born Asian in uh, an Anglo country such as the United States of America, I've experienced fully and completely the brutality that is the modern dating marketplace and how hard it can be to and, and this is from my analysis that uh, of my objective sexual marketplace value before going on the journey of self-improvement and learning how to dress and getting some swag and and learning how to spit some game that to many women uh, not many I would say but a and, and, and a substantial amount of women in the United States of America, they would look at me and they would see me as a three. So to these men who are in to the guys I t try to talk to and make content for the the virgins, the incels, the lonely, the the older men, uh, the the not physically attractive, the awkward, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, I get it. I understand how it feels to be lonely and emotionally broken and just feeling like there's no hope, no inspiration. Why bother? Why am I even doing this? And uh, and there may be even cause to question, like, do I really want to continue playing the video game of life? And this is very, very serious stuff. So to address the two points of uh, inspiration and also hope I wanted to tell you guys my about my first real interaction with a woman ever in the country of Colombia which was in my first trip ever there 2009 and while I generally say that 2011 is when my life in Colombia really began where the travel just ramped up like this my first trip ever there was in 2009. This was not too far removed from just the uh, the, the narco years of, of the 90s. And going there at that time was a really a pioneering thing. And I was a very young man. I just started figuring out my dating life. I was 26 years old and uh, I, I wasn't confident, no Spanish. Uh, just uh, my, my salsa abilities were not fully uh, developed yet and I was still just didn't have it all together and I could tell you that as a man still trying to figure things out in the modern dating marketplace in the new in New York City which at the time was extraordinarily competitive uh, especially in real life in the bars and the clubs let's just say that it was brutal and I and I don't wish, nor do I believe that most men have the kind of emotional constitution to be able to go to clubs by themselves night after night, go home empty handed, getting rejected and just doing that for years and months on end until you can finally figure it out and put it all together. No, I don't expect them to do that, nor would I want them to do that. So. While I wasn't getting no success whatsoever and I was starting to uh, have a good time, it came at a very heavy cost in, in terms of emotional investment, time investment, money, 
late nights at the club, days tired at, at work, and all of this just to be able to meet women and be able to hopefully find a partner or a girlfriend in the modern unregulated dating marketplace in the years 2006 to 2009. Fast forward a generation later where the marketplace has dating marketplace has changed completely where things are more online, more looks based. Uh, we have more of the top, 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 top uh, thrown at us in, in form of social media. Only the hottest bodies, the, the, you know, the hottest men, the hottest women, top performers that are, that are at the top of the algorithms. The, the expectations of the women have also gone really, really through the roof. And uh, through so their own social their own social medias, they also get a overly inflated sense of self self worth through all the likes, all the comments, all the thirsty dudes, which are generally employing a uh, a spray and pray method where they're just throwing things out there and hoping one sticks. Why? Because they don't know what else to do and they don't have any other other strategies. Okay, so so for these men. Like especially average men and below average men, uh, you know, below average height, uh, money, looks, uh, combination, whatever. If you're not in the 20%, it's getting increasingly harder for you. And you may be feeling like uh, the, the person commenting on my video about being emotionally broken, not having any affection, not having any intimacy, being treated cruelly. Being, uh, feeling invisible, not being seen, not being acknowledged, not understanding how this might end, and having no hope that that things could get better because things have been so bad for so long and so barren and empty and devoid of kindness and compassion and, and human connection and affection for so long that they just don't know what to do. And it feels absolutely hopeless. And yes, I understand that. And for for these men, as I developed the Saiyan Chan channel and talk to people about uh, Colombia, I want you guys to experience and start having small, small wins in life. And I hope to be able to help you do that with my channel or Say and Chan Consulting, Life Coaching, and Dance Academy. If you need that, email Say and Chan at protonmail.com. I hope to help you guys get some small wins, which will lead to small but increasing and growing and stacking bits of hope, which will give you inspiration and energy and a desire to continue with this life thing called life. Because I can tell you, after having put in the work and having to you know stumble around in the darkness for a long time that life is worth living it can be absolutely wonderful and great and, and full of passion and joy and happiness and affection being emotionally physically spiritually um, healthy all these things are possible but it's hard to imagine when you're at the very bottom and you're getting none of these and what I'm saying might be a bit foreign, but but trust trust your Asian godfather. He's got you covered, all right? Uh, shout out to the, the original godfather, Kevin Samuels. We love you. Uh, rest in peace, godfather. Thank you for what you've done for all of us. And now I hope to be continuing his work. So I want to tell you guys the, the story of the first Colombian woman I had ever met. And as you know, the Say and Chan channel does not talk about, uh, does not promote just promiscuity and, and racking up body counts and notches because as I will explain in the future, I don't believe that that is just conducive for really for the men or for the women. Okay. So in my first trip ever to Colombia, I was still young and awkward and I earned a lot less money. I was living in my parents' basement at the time and, um, and things were just, while they started getting better, just due to sheer effort, they were not great. And I realized very early on that my sexual marketplace value was low and that most American women saw me as a four and a substantial number of them saw me as a, as a three. So in 2009, a good friend of mine, uh, and not, not for womanizing, 
we, we, we had started travel, traveling for uh, a couple of years already internationally. And we chose that year to go to Colombia because it was just close. It was cheap. I had always been curious about it. And I just wanted to check it out. So we did a, a, a five city trip in nine days. We went to, we went to Santa Marta, Cartagena, Bogota, Medellin, and, Car and uh, Cali for about one or two nights each time. And we just zigzagged around the country like absolute maniacs. And when we landed in Santa Marta, which is a beach town uh, in the northern part of Cali, right by the, the coast, we decided right away that we did not like this place and we did not want to stay in this place. And Cartagena was four hours to the, the west. So we said, okay, let's, let's, let's not even check into our hotel. Forget this. Let's go get back on the bus. Uh, then go to the terminal, get back on the bus, go drive west and, um, and go check out what Cartagena is like. And that's exactly what we did. So us two dopey guys, we get on the bus and on the, on the bus, there was a, a lone uh, woman. She must have been in her early 20s. I was 26 at the time, I think, uh, 26, 27, somewhere around there. And uh, she was sitting there by herself. And I said, oh my gosh, this girl is so beautiful. And she looked very exotic to me. It was very pretty, very kept together. Nothing revealing, nothing crazy. But she was she was one of those girls that, for me at least, when uh, you guys know how th this is like when you're when you look at a woman and say, "Oh, wow, this is this is very very nice. I, I, I'd like to get to know her, see what's up." And uh, you know, there, there's a bit of interest going on that that stirs up the uh, the passions a bit. So I noticed that. Uh, so I, look, I would look at her and then I would look at the window. I would look at her. I would look at the window. And then uh, my buddy said, to me, hey, man, you know, she's checking you out, right? And then so I looked at her and then we locked eyes and then I smiled at her and she smiled at me. And I said, I said, man, what do I do? I don't know what to do. And he says, go and talk to her. At that time, my Spanish was just atrociously bad. It was terrible, but it wasn't zero. So. I did a little wave at her and then she, you know, she smiled and she, you know, got all shy and cutesy and uh, she didn't wave back, but she kind of looked away. And then, so, so then I said, okay, uh, get out of my way. I, I need, I want to go talk to her. So, so I, I step over him. I, I go sit next to her in the seat that was empty and we, I, I started talking to her and the, the communication was, was absolutely brutal. I didn't have a translator. There was no Google translate. Um, no, it, it, it was no dictionary. It was just hard, but we just kind of, uh, we, we did what we could with what we had. And we, we, we talked for the, for the, for the bus ride. And then, and then somewhere along the line, I just saw her. And then there, there wasn't much talking because I, I couldn't, I couldn't flow with the conversation, but there was just a lot of staring at each other, looking into each other's eyes, smiling. And eventually, I got brave enough to just hold her hand on the bus with a woman that I had just met in, in the country of Colombia. The, the first co Colombian woman in, in Colombia that I ever had any physical contact with. And uh, so, so we, held, we held on to each other's hands and we just, uh, you know, I, I got her phone number. But uh, somewhere in the conversation, in the middle of there, she looks at me. And then she said, you know, I think, uh, you know, it is muy guapo. And that means like you are very handsome or in a way uh, of expressing that she th thought that I look like beautiful. And I said to myself, my God, this girl thinks I'm handsome. I'm beautiful. Do you know what? Do you know what kind of a boost to a man's self-esteem that causes when a woman that he finds beautiful and, and beautiful and inspirational and, and attractive, who thinks might be um, out of his league and definitely more uh, physically beautiful and visually appealing to look at. When she, tell, when she told me that she thought I looked beautiful to her and that I was 
causing her to be a li little intimidated and shy, that absolutely blew my mind. I, 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 I couldn't believe it. And what I felt there for the first time, it made me feel like wanted and appreciated and that I was not like low on the totem pole in the world. And I realized that, hey, there, while I, while I wasn't having zero success in America, it wasn't easy, but I realized that there are women out there, starting with her being the first one, that, that there are women out there that will find me attractive, that want me as I am, that would be cool with a regular hunky, hunky dory old uh, Saiyan Chan, as opposed to Super Saiyan Chan, the way you see now, you know, with the right shades, with the with, with the with the suit on, all in shape and stuff, and, and having uh, developed a lot of confidence from having lived life. No, just a young, insecure, inexperienced, bad salsa, bad Spanish, living in his mom's basement, just 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 a regular old guy. And then, and I still felt wanted and desired, and it gave me a massive boost to my self-esteem, and and to my my psyche and my emotional well-being because so many of you guys who have never experienced what I'm talking about these basic levels of human connection and uh, affection and appreciation it fe life can feel like an absolute desert and once you get enough of these reference experiences under your belt, then you'll be like, oh, okay, it's all right. Uh, this girl might think like I'm a three. She might not like me, but at least I know for certain that there are women out there that do want me, who do need me, and who do find me attractive, and I can just go to them. That's fine. Not every woman is going to find me attractive. Cool. And at least I have options. And I know that things are not bleak. They're not hopeless. The women exist out there. All right? So... Um, I, I couldn't get in contact with her again after that because I didn't go back to Colombia after, for another two years until 2011. But still, in uh, with this story, which did not involve getting laid, did not involve any, anything crazy, um, not even a real date, but just a man and a woman meeting each other on a bus and connecting in on a human level. That... That first moment ever, my first ever experience with a Colombian woman in Colombia will stay with me for the rest of my life. And for the rest of my life, I can look back on that trip and, and, and think about her and have this great memory that I shared with her and also my best friend and was the start of my amazing um, uh, life uh, experiences in, 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 in Colombia that it'll take It'll go with me to the grave. What's the word I'm looking for? Is it indelible? I'm not sure. I'll look it up when I go into the dictionary. But the point is, I hope that you guys can experience the same. And if you can't make it work for yourself in the United States of America and what I'm talking about is foreign, I recommend you go travel to a climate, dating climate, that is more favorable to men, more friendly, the women are not as hard and choosy and, and selective and where the, um, where, where the dating economy is not messed up to the point where it's just become extremely difficult for, for the average man. All right. And uh, folks, you know, I started saying Chan life coaching and consulting to, to help men, but, uh, but for but my here is my goal here is not to just suck money out of you guys endlessly. You understand that the advice, the number one thing I tell men to do, is go to Colombia. I have a free free videos where I give out as much information about the country that I can. And going to Colombia, but for you guys to go to Colombia, I get nothing. And I hope that that is the first resort for all of you guys to do like I do. Just go there and figure it out. And even if the trip is suboptimal, and but so long as you get something, you have a good time, you get to relax, maybe you get a date or two and get treated kindly like a real human being and appreciate it as a man, well, that might give you some hope and that will give you some inspiration, right? So 
So for, for any of you folks who really need help, you can email, uh, you can book a session, email me at sayinchan at protonmail.com. Everyone else, I hope this video has also been inspirational and has and and has served to give you folks a little bit of hope. Because while it's not impossible in the United States of America, if you know what you're doing, the bar is considerably high, very high compared to what most average and below average men are um, are are at, and it's going to take a ton of work. I'm not saying it's not going to take work in Colombia, but for sure it is it is more um, human there and more friendly and more warm and the chances and while not guaranteed your chances of being treated and appreciated and wanted and liked and being uh, able to get some sort of a uh, emotional intimacy and connection with women there it's higher okay I folks please like comment share and subscribe this is Sage Hand signing off, reminding us all to always cogitate and analyze.